morning. As is our tradition here at Zion, we offer prayer at the end of the month for those who had uh, birthdays that month. Uh, so, anybody have any February birthdays that they want to mess up to? Had one at the early service then as well. All right, let's pray together for our birthdays. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these your children as they celebrate their birthdays. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and in grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness. And bless them with your abiding love all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you and happy birthday. See, we'll continue with our opening hymn number 779. before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. All mighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to our lasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro for today. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, for our mighty help, for your strength. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exalt over me, redeem the Israel of God, and of all of his troubles. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 32. That same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, living because of his head. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the gradual. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you re 
received from us, how you ought to live and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us to impurity, but in holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can ever remind the peace of the Lord, for he bear all his grace? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people, help me when you save them. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. <laughs> then Jesus answered, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Christ. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. He got to the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of the very God. He got to not make, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose seen will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, with the seeds of the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who slept by the cross. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now sing our sermon hymn number 615. Thank you.
and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the story this morning from the Gospel lesson of this Canaanite woman's faith in Jesus is one that still speaks to us today. It's not that we still deal with demon possession like they did 2,000 years ago, but the fervent hope of this woman that Jesus would rescue her daughter is one of strong faith in the face of opposition. No one thinks that Jesus would really refuse to help someone in their desperate need, and that's not what's really going on here either. But neither is Jesus like in the ATM, that you go up to and push the right buttons and you get what you want. He's not just a miracle worker answering our first request whenever we come to him for help. And maybe you know that pretty well already. Because one of the main points from this lesson is that God will sometimes test our faith. And sometimes that means testing in the face of fear and temptation to see if we're going to hold steadfast to his promises or just give up when the going gets tough. Remember last week, even Jesus faced multiple temptations from Satan. More than just one, more than just one hurdle, we know of only three. Who knows how many actually happened? So first in the lesson, this woman that comes up to Jesus is not even an Israelite, and they're not even in Israel anymore either. Jesus has left Galilee, headed north, probably to spend some quiet time with the disciples away from the crowds to teach them. And yet here's this woman who finds him, who knows who this man is and calls after him. But she calls to him in such a way that she's already showing her faith that this man is the Christ, the son of David, come to deliver people. Jesus' first response is to not even answer her a word. Imagine that. Going to the helper, but no answer. He doesn't even seem to acknowledge her, to acknowledge her problems. And yet, Jesus does hear her request, just as he hears all proper prayers. And just like our prayers that don't receive an immediate answer, Jesus is testing her faith to see if she's going to remain firm and strong in his promises despite a temporary delay. She does. She continues to call out, continues to follow him. She believes that Jesus can help her in her need. And so she continues calling out in faith, looking for a favorable answer from Jesus. And that's what the disciples said. They petitioned for this woman to receive a answer from Jesus to help them. Maybe their motivation is because they don't want their solitude, their time away with just Jesus to be disrupted now by huge crowds that are going to start following them even outside of Israel. So they're asking Jesus to help them. Just like when we're struggling. And we're sharing our struggles with someone, and we ask them if they will pray for us. We call the church, and we ask for the church's prayers. Prayer does help. Prayer does work. It does benefit us to know that others are also petitioning God to do His will in our lives. And that's when Jesus responds to the disciples. But it doesn't seem to be a good one. He claims to only have been sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Well, that seems to count on this one, right? She's a foreigner, a Canaanite. But if you remember your Old Testament at all, you know that God has helped out and saved others who were not Israelites and yet had faith in God and His promises. Some of those very people that we know of in the Old Testament ended up being ancestors of Jesus then. There was Rahab from Jericho, 
There is Ruth from Moab. Even Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army. These all claim the promises of God as their very own and fervent faith. So now this woman, this Canaanite woman, also becomes a descendant of Israel. A descendant of Abraham, not by blood, but by her confession of faith. And then Jesus speaks to her that it's not right to take the children's food and give it to the dogs. But let's think about that a little bit more, a little bit deeply. What does that mean? Because surely no parent cooks supper, dishes up a plate of food, and walks right past their child to set it in front of the family pet. No parent does that. Not even the cruel ones. No, the proper order is the children eat first. And then depending on the child, their age, or their manners in eating, then there's usually something on the floor, besides maybe the scraps on the plate that didn't eat, right? That's what this woman is claiming here. Not that full plate, but the scraps of grace and mercy that the Israelites have just refused. Those who deny that Jesus is the Christ, they've removed themselves from God's promises, from the rules of heaven. And when they do that, they leave room for others to come and take their place. Paul comments on that even in the book of Romans. Not all who are of Israel are Israelites. But the true descendants of Abraham are those who hold fast to these promises, the same promises of God that Abraham believed. That Abraham believed and his faith was credited to him as righteousness. And it doesn't matter what nationality you are. This woman gets her promise. Jesus finally answers her prayer favorably. Her daughter is healed. The demon is cast out. She's saved. God's will is done in her life as well. This woman has now faced the trials of faith. She's held firmly to these promises of God that no evil will befall those who trust in him for goodness and mercy all the days of their lives. That doesn't mean there won't be problems. That doesn't mean there won't be trials or temptations in the life of a believer. But what it means is that eventually all things work for the good of those who love God. Trials and temptations are meant to strengthen the faith. The Bible talks about this as, as a fire, testing faith to see if it's genuine or not, to see if it's gold or if it's stubble. Gold. Gold is made even more pure as it is refined by fire. It's made better, stronger. But stubble? You put stubble to fire and it's gone. It's consumed and destroyed. Those who have faith in Jesus Christ and his gracious mercy and love are sanctified by their crosses, and temptations, and trials. They come to the life of a, of a believer. Those without faith. They give up when temptation comes. When life gets hard, they lose their hope and they lose eternal life. They feel that if God has abandoned them, not answering them, that He's not real. He doesn't deserve their faith or their devotion. But you know how the world treated Christ, don't you? He struggled to find true faith in Israel. He struggled under severe crosses, carrying the load of our sin. He was treated so poorly by those who should have been calling out to others that this is the Christ, that those became the ones who actually saw his death and crucifixion. Sometimes those with the greatest faith weren't even Israelites. By that, those who were supposed to have faith, to know all that God had said in His Word, didn't have it. While those who were outside, sinners, they gladly heard and accepted God's gifts of grace and forgiveness. 
in Jesus' words. He did not come to save the righteous, but sinners. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. That's why we gladly confess our sins, gladly confess our need for a Savior. Jesus himself will in one with God need to send his son to die on the cross. What has Christ accomplished for you that you are unable to do on your own because of sin? No matter what life throws at you, we've had a lot thrown at us lately. Hold fast to Christ, to his promises to you in his word. His will is that you are saved. Satan wants you to throw away God's mercy, wants you to give up, wants you to think you can do what's best in your life. God wants you to cling to him, like Jacob in that wrestling match. He wouldn't let the man go, the man that we see as God, wrestling with God. He wouldn't let him go until he had received a blessing, even though it meant physical pain throughout the rest of Jacob's life. Yeah, that's right. Jacob walked with a limp from that. And even then, his descendants would not eat a certain part of the meat to remember what God had done to their father, but also to remember what God had promised their father Jacob, whose name was changed then to Israel. This woman held fast to her faith in Christ. Until she finally obtained that favorable answer. Now, if you're paying attention, you saw that Jesus never said no to the woman. Not directly. But the whole time he was testing her to see if she would re remain steadfast in that faith. You also remain firm in your trust of God, in your belief in his word that no matter what happens next in your life, you still believe in him and that he has the best meant for you in your future. Keep doing what you know is right, no matter what it costs you. Continue to live as a Christian, even if it might mean that you suffer loss of possessions in this world. It's not what we have here, but it's the eternal benefits that matter most to us. That's where our true treasure lies, in Christ and in his gifts for all who steadfastly cling to him. Amen. Amen. The peace that passes all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds to Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please stand for our prayers. Shepherd of Israel, our Lord and Master, remember your tender mercies and loving kindness of old. Do not let our enemies triumph over us, and do not depart from us until you have blessed us. As you strove for Jacob, so strive now for your faithful people who put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Shepherd of Israel, you disdain nothing that you have made, creating in us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging your wretchedness, we would receive your absolution with true penitence. Boy, in your mercy, shepherd of Israel, preserve all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our synod president, Justin, our district president, and Clark, our circuit visitor. Renew in this congregation and among all your saints faith to claim to you university, boldness to oppose the devil and resist the flesh, and compassion to serve one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, we are shepherd of Israel. 
preserve all commandments and their teachers, all children and their parents, and in every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one, as you have called us in holiness. So sanctify us to want as we are, and to please you through our Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, give steadfastness and wisdom to our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Laura, our governor, and all congressmen, judges, and civil servants, to have peace between nations and a spirit of humility and concord to our citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, as we have no strength to save ourselves from sickness and death, Defend us and those we love from every adversity of body and soul. Especially remember Wayne Anders, who is scheduled for surgery tomorrow, and Janice Evans. Remember not our former iniquities, but let your tender mercies come speedily. Lord, in your mercy, shepherd of Israel. Though it is not right to give the children's bread to dogs or to cast pearls before the swine, even the dogs with the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Receive us in your mercy and enable all who commune to make the good confession both of our sin and of you, our only Savior, that we may receive your true body and blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we implore you by your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hearts and confirm our faith and hope in your grace and mercy, so that although we have no we have reason to fear because of our conscience, our sin, and our unworthiness, may we nevertheless, with the woman of Canaan, hold fast to your grace, and in every trial and temptation. Find you a present help and refuge through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. We'll now receive our offerings. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to Christ. 
It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. For the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love, shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, the law and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink the quality. This cup is the New Testament in my home, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
of this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen.